Homeostasis is a really important theme in anatomy and physiology that we'll see all year. We'll see it multiple times with different things, variables that need to be regulated. So what is homeostasis? Let's start there. Homeostasis, you may have heard of this term. Um, it literally means um, maintaining a stable environment, but we'll see it's a little bit more complicated because there's going to be dynamic regulation as a part of this. But the term does mean, mean maintaining a relatively stable, so relatively meaning that there's going to be some dynamicness to it. Um, so despite changing environmental conditions and stable environment, um, internal environment, let me add that because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about our bodies. And I know I did not spell that right. Internal, so inside our bodies. Typically inside our bodies is going to be things in the extracellular fluid. Um, a lot of things in the blood, blood sugar, for example. So these things I'm talking about, that it's going to be variable in the environment that are maintained, like blood glucose. And then I want to point out one thing before I go into those variables. The organ systems act to maintain homeostasis, most of them at least. Reproductive is one that it, um, is kind of exception to that. And that's a good way to lead into not all processes in our body are designed or attempting to maintain homeostasis directly. Some processes are designed to have something happen. So digestion, um, blood clotting, um, childbirth, fire and of action potential, a lot of stuff in our, our body. Those don't directly act to maintain homeostasis. They're important for like our life, um, so you need to have, uh, digest food in order to maintain glucose indirectly, but they are not, um, all, not the organ systems don't, aren't always only trying to maintain. Otherwise, you'd never be able, be able to grow um, and reproduce and develop, right? Because we're not just trying to maintain, we're trying to get better. Um, uh, so with that in mind, let's talk about what things are regulated and what homeostasis really looks like. So regulated variables are variables, which means things that have levels to them. So glucose, for example, um, that are maintained within some range, a fairly narrow range. They have a set point, a ideal level, and they are maintained right around that set point. So in a relatively stable state, in order for something to be a regulated variable, it needs to be able to be detected, right? Like obviously you have to be able to detect something and so that you can then maintain within this range. Um, And so the idea of this word regulated variable, that's the common terminology for these variables that are maintained within a certain range. It's a little misleading though, because you can have a variable that's regulated by like the nervous system, but it's not a regulated variable. So we'll see, why don't we actually go ahead and, and name some things that are regulated variables. So I already said glucose, blood glucose, right? because glucose, like other places in your body, um, isn't really regulated, like in your intestines. That's not regulated. Um, body temperature. A lot of other things in the blood. So blood, salt, it's actually osmolarity, pH, um, various nutrients, specific nutrients in the blood, blood pressure. Those are some common ones. What about heart rate? Do you think that that is a regulated variable? Well, 
it literally is something in the body that's regulated. Your nervous system and endocrine system can regulate heart rate, but it is not a regulated variable. It is designed to change dynamically in order to maintain blood pressure. The range of heart, the heart rate is maybe 40 to 200 is a normal, is a fine heart rate, depending on the condition, right? If your heart rate's 200 when you're sleeping, that's a problem. Um, and your heart is designed to go within that range, to change dynamically, to meet the needs of your body, maintain blood pressure, um, for example, largely. So it is not a regulated variable, even though it's, it is not maintained around a narrow set point. And homeostatic variables are designed to be maintained in all environmental conditions. So while heart rate varies dramatically, whether you're sleeping or exercising, between those two things, it might be 50 when you're resting, it might be 190 when you're exercising, your blood pressure does not vary like that in those two conditions. So that's homeostasis, is when it is stable in the different environmental conditions. Let's see, um, actually, I will just do it on the next, the next slide. I've got this, this image here. So let's see an example. This is an example of a regulated variable temperature. So body temperature, 30 degrees, um, it's about 98 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually have to check that. Actually, I think I checked that once and it wasn't the same. So let's just say here, so like normal body temperature. That's our set point. So imagine this is some alien species that has a set point of 30 degrees Celsius, um, which I recall now is more like 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You'd be dead. So in this alien species, set point is 30 degrees Celsius. Your set point is about 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And what you can see here is over time, there is some fluctuation within a narrow, pretty narrow range around that set point. These fluctuations are also called oscillations. So there are oscillations around a narrow range that is the maintenance of these internal conditions. And um, the process by which this occurs are homeostatic processes that change low body temperature, detect that, and go back to normal, detect high body temperature, and go back to normal. These fluctuations aren't enough for you to even notice, but your body responds to them. This is called dynamic equilibrium. So homeostasis, that term of like stable environment, is not quite true, right? Because it is, it is, it is dynamic. And if it wasn't dynamic, your body wouldn't have to do anything, right? Like that's why homeostatic processes need to occur is because there's these fluctuations that are occurring. If you're not able to bring this back down or up though, that's where dysfunction or disease can, can occur. Um, so we'll see this example with, we draw some negative feedback loops, but here you might have um, processes that act to heat the body. Shivering is one of those. You're probably not gonna shiver um, with this small blip here. Um, vasoconstriction, so changes to, to blood flow, where the blood is going, can occur. Vasodilation, and this is subtle, right? So we'll see different examples of this, either subtle changes. Often when I talk about negative feedback, um, which is what is occurring here, we'll see some big examples. So like you start running and you need to have mechanisms that cool you down, that are much more extreme. Like, so let's say sweating. The sweating is a response to high body temperature that acts to maintain homeostasis. Okay, I think we're ready for a learning check here. So, which of these are regulated variables? Just a reminder by regulated, 
that needs maintained. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. Not those, the rest are. So body temperature, blood pressure, and blood glucose. Those aren't all the regulated variables, but they're the only ones on this list. Heart rates designed to dynamically change, um, dynamically meaning quickly and large changes in order to maintain blood pressure. Sweating is a response to changes in blood um, body temperature in order to maintain body temperature. It is not itself maintained. You're not, what it would mean if sweating was a maintained or regulated variable is that it is important for your body to always be sweating the same amount all the time. That's not an important thing. Doesn't matter how much you sweat until you start losing, losing blood volume, then your hypothalamus has to tell you to start drinking, the urinary system tells you to start conserving liquid, the other organ systems help to maintain fluid volume because of all the sweating that you're doing in order to maintain the other variables. Integration of organ systems, super cool. Okay, I'm gonna say negative feedback, which is the mechanism for homeostasis um, for the next video.